Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to share with you what has been a work in progress for me. It's been on my to-do list for a long time, and I'm slowly getting through it. But what I want to share with you is my process that I'm starting to adopt for backing up and archiving my Logic projects. This is a task that we all have to face because we're all generating a lot of projects and content, and you want to make sure that your projects and content are safe regardless of what happens. You know, we never want to think about those worst case scenarios, but fires do happen. Thefts happen. Just a hard drive dying happens. So it's really better to be safe than sorry. But trying to maintain multiple copies of the same project across different hard drives and cloud storage options, it's really a chore. It's not a task for the meek. And honestly, as diligent as I've tried to be through the years, it is a pain. And because of that, I've decided to start adapting and changing my strategy for backing up and archiving. And I'd like to share that with you today. Much to my surprise, file management of logic projects and files is the most requested topic that I received just in the last week alone. And I have plenty of videos related to file management from how to save your projects whether you should work with packages or folders, how to locate files that haven't been copied to the project, how to use the import project data function. I mean, so many videos on this topic. And I've actually, because of this, I've created a new playlist just called File Management, which this video and many of those other videos that I just mentioned will be a part of. And I'll link to that playlist right within this video. Cool, so let's dig into backing up and archiving. In a nutshell, it's always good to have multiple copies of your projects because you never know what could happen. And if you only have one copy and that copy ends up on a hard drive that dies or it gets stolen or whatever, then you're out of your project. The typical recommendation for archiving is that you should have at least three copies of your projects. Typically, this would be two copies on two separate hard drives in your possession and then one cloud storage option. And while this is all well and good and we all try to follow the best of rules, it is so much work to manage all these different projects and make sure to copy them from one drive to the next. And then you worry about, oh, was that the newest one or the oldest one? It's just such a pain. And I've shown this in previous videos, but let me just show you real quick. Here are some of the hard drives I have in my possession, and I'm sure they don't touch the amount of hard drives other folks have, but I have seven stacked up here of varying degrees of space. And then I have two more. This is my current active drive. This is running my OS and everything on my Mac. Plus there's the hard drive inside the Mac and then my MacBook. You know, I'm just up to my ears and hard drives and yet I can't keep any of this stuff straight. So I decided I got to change the way that I'm managing all these files. And so this is a current work in progress on my huge list of to-dos, but I'm slowly working through it. In a nutshell, I have my working hard drive here, which I work off of. So any projects that are currently in production, I'm saving them onto this hard drive and then working from this hard drive. I also have a secondary drive for archiving. And then I also have a Dropbox folder dedicated to music production. And I'm using Dropbox as my offsite archive, but really the whole system hinges on Dropbox. I've been using Dropbox since about 2011. And I would say about 2014 is when I started paying monthly for the service. And in the last 10 years, I've never had a project corrupted or disappear when it's living in Dropbox. Whether or not you're a fan of Dropbox, I'm just going to share my system with you. And from there, you can decide on what works best for your workflow. But here's my system. I have my working drive. And you can see that several of my other hard drives, I've copied their folders to this hard drive just because I'm rearranging right now. Again, it's a work in progress. But I have a folder here called work in progress. And I saved new logic projects to this folder. These are projects that I'm mixing for clients or, you know, mixing for friends or whatever. And at the end of each day, I then copy this folder to Dropbox. So I have a folder here called work in progress. And then I just do the old option, click and drag. So just hold option, click and drag. And then we get the notification. We have a folder already named this name. Do you want to replace it? In this case, not really because nothing's new or changed. And right out of the gate, I have two copies always available to me. I have my hard copy and my cloud copy. And because both of my Macs are connected to Dropbox, they both have access to this project in case something happens. Once the project here is complete, it's done, client's happy or I'm happy or I'm just ready to put it aside, I have these different folders here for different years. And each folder has, in this case, not much, but 2014 masters and projects. And then we can select and we can poke through it. 
Once the project is done on the hard drive, I copy it to the work in progress and then I drag the work in progress to the appropriate folder and move it. And then I copy the same exact project to an archival drive. In this case, we'll just say it's this one, even though it's a hot mess right now. But, you know, let's assume that this says archive and it has the same exact folder structure. I just copy it right onto that drive and then I can remove it from my working drive. And once that project is saved, I can then go into that folder and right click. And Dropbox has these amazing features called Smart Sync. So I can just go right down to Smart Sync and say whether I want this particular folder to be locally on my hard drive or only online, which I click only online. And then it beams it up to the cloud to Dropbox and it's off of my internal drive on my Mac. This workflow to me is awesome for a lot of reasons. One, I'm not trying to copy from hard drive to hard drive all the time. Instead, Dropbox is my crux for archiving all of my content. And the secondary archival drive is only there when I'm completely done with a project. I can access any project from any year from any Mac because everything's in the cloud. And then because of the smart sync option right down here, I can still see and poke through every single project in my archive and then only download it to my Mac when I need it which is amazing because it saves me tons of space on my local drives and it makes it much easier to navigate through the archives instead of having to go through hard drive after hard drive and trying to make sure everything's copied and pasted. Of course, in this particular scenario, I'm only mentioning two backup solutions, not three. Personally, in my opinion, Dropbox is probably safer and more redundant any day of the week than I will ever be with physical hard drives. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons to think in the opposite, but I'm feeling good with Dropbox. I've been with them for 10 years and they have never once lost anything of mine. But it is worth pointing out that I do not work from a project from within Dropbox because that is when things can get screwy because Dropbox is constantly, you know, beaming content up and down. So that's why I have my local hard drive here that I work from. Additionally, for different plans, Dropbox offers different options for recovery and version history and going back in time. For something like the Plus account, you get 30 days of both. For the professional account, which I'm using, it's 180 days. So, you know, roughly half the year. And honestly, just in my opinion, it's just way easier to manage and maintain. Some might suggest that Dropbox is only a cloud syncing solution where it's just syncing files between different devices. It's not really meant for backing up. These days, Dropbox is positioning itself as a cloud file backup solution. And honestly, I find Dropbox to be way easier than things like CrashPlan or Backblaze because it's just more intuitively kind of like embedded in the Mac OS. Some other details in my archiving process, if we head back to Dropbox here, and we take a look at some of my folders. For a while, I used to name projects just silly names like Audio 1, Audio 2, Creepy Riff, whatever, you know, just things that are not very helpful when you're trying to sort through and keep track of everything. And then eventually I decided to just start dating projects. So I always start with the year. So in this case, we have 2020 and then followed by the month and then the date that I created the project and then the name of the project itself or the artist that I'm working with. This has saved me so much time and effort in keeping track of different projects around my system. Additionally, for my own riffs and projects, I do the same thing. I date everything. And I also have started to try to build a habit, always bouncing out my projects when I'm done with them at the end of the day. It's much easier to just navigate to an MP3 and hit the space bar to begin playback instead of opening the project and waiting for logic to load. So in this case, you know, I just hit space bar. And it's that simple. One caveat when it comes to Dropbox is that things get a little funky when you first are setting it up and you're trying to smart sync everything to be in the cloud where, you know, if we take a look right down here, when I first started syncing everything up to Dropbox, I would say, okay, go to the cloud, you know, get off my local disk and yet my local disk would be completely full. And that was like, what the heck is going on here? Well, it turns out that in the settings of Dropbox, there is a setting called Smart Sync Update for Mac. And with this update, online only files will no longer take up space. You gotta turn it on. Because without this on, your Mac hard drive doesn't really recognize that all of these files are not on the Mac hard drive anymore. So it still thinks that it's taking up tons of space. Once that setting is turned on, you should be good to go. Maybe you got to quit Dropbox. Maybe you got to restart. Eventually, it'll work itself out. The last piece here is that maybe you're wondering how come, Chris, you're not using iCloud for backing up your projects. It has similar features. It will beam your projects up to the cloud. And if you don't use it for a certain amount of time, it will then remove it from your local drive, which is cool. 
And I love iCloud. I pay for a subscription to manage my photos and documents and everything else. But I ultimately landed on Dropbox for two reasons. Number one, while iCloud does have a sort of smart sync feature, it all depends on your Mac to identify when a project hasn't been used in a certain amount of time, then it removes it from your local drive. Sometimes it's very eager to remove it. Sometimes it's not as eager. And honestly, I'd rather just tell iCloud myself when I want stuff beamed up or down from the cloud. The other detail that kind of worried me is that I saved a pretty basic project to iCloud. And then weeks later, when I went to open that project, it turned out it had been corrupted and I wasn't able to open it. I think I did have a copy, so it was A-OK, -okay, but that was very worrying. Of course, if Apple decides to create a logic-specific backup and archiving strategy and service that works in iCloud, I would happily try it out. I would be pumped to try it out. But for now, I'm relying on Dropbox as the crux of my backing up strategy. And really, I'm relying on external hard drives a little less. Maybe it's not the perfect solution, but in my opinion, the best solution is the one that you actually stick with. And that's easy to implement. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.